We are gatekeepers of the home and the nation. Relentless in prayer and intercession. Father, we bless your name. Thank you for what you're doing in us and for us and through us. Let your name be glorified. We commit today's study of the word into your hands. Reveal deep and secret things to us. In the name of Jesus, open the eyes of our understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we pray that today deliver us from any shackle. In any way any of us have been entangled, knowingly or unknowingly, let deliverance arise today. In the name of Jesus, we decree progress to our work. We decree a new form of walking in dominion. Lord, you will open our eyes to know our true identity. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name. Lift up your goals before God and say, Father, this is my aspiration. This is what I want to do this year. Bless it, oh God. Yes. Lift up your personal goals before God. First Kings chapter number 21, we were going to look at Jezebel. Where did we stop? Amen. Verse number 4. Okay. Let's read it again. First Kings 21 from verse 4. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth, the Jezreelites, had spoken to him. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. But Jezebel his wife came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? And he said unto her, Because I spake unto Naboth the Jezreelite and said unto him, Give me thy vineyard for money, or else, if it please thee, I will give thee another vineyard for it. And he answered, I will not give thee my vineyard. And Jezebel his wife said unto him, Doest thou not govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, and let thine heart be merry. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, and sealed them with his seal, and sent letters unto the elders, and to the nobles that were in his cities, dwelling with Naboth. Thank you very much. And um, from there, we will continue. Let, let's just look at verse number seven. But let's start from verse number seven. He said, Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, don't, are you not the one governing the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat and let your heart be merry. I will give you, I will give you the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. What can you deduce from the tone of her voice saying this? She was saying something to appease her husband, but the tone tells you that this woman was not a submissive woman. The tone shows she was a domineering woman. And that's the important point that we need to begin to look at. Jezebel took over control from her husband. Jezebel was so terrible spiritually. And she was somebody that, epit you know, when you stand for something, she left a bad legacy. So much so that... In the book of Revelations, there was a reference to her. And we're going to get to that in a bit. Jezebel is now like a spirit in certain people. They call it the Jezebelic spirit. Please, I want you to listen very well. Jezebelic spirit is a spirit of witchcraft. Which you, every child of God, you must be able to identify it. Some of you, it is taking place in your business. You don't know. Some of you, some people are operating in that spirit, even in your home. You don't know. And we're going to look at it now and begin. I pray God will open your eyes. This is a deadly spirit. The spirit that could confront a whole prophet and said he was going to kill the prophet. The spirit that could confront a whole nation and turn the whole nation brought evil worship. So, it's a spirit of control where it is not the control that is not proper. The control that is not earned. You are a parent. You have control over your children because of your position. Right or wrong? 
But some people want control where they are not supposed to have control. Jezebelic spirit is a spirit of control. Jezebel can be said to be the most evil woman in the Bible. In the whole Bible. The Bible even used her name to describe those who completely reject God. Can you give me Revelations 2 verse 20 and 21? So her name is if being used to describe people who reject God. Revelations 2 verse 20 and 21. Yes. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication, and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Amen. She repented not. People with Jezebelic spirit never give up. Please note what, I'm, note what you are going to learn today. You see, everything about the spirit of witchcraft, it will continue if you don't judge it. It will continue to operate and it, it is a destructive spirit. Jezebelic spirit exists in many people today. In the church, in the home, in the office. Haven't you seen some offices where it will be one person controlling the MD? It will be one person somewhere controlling the pastor. The, the head is just there like a dummy. Ahab was a dummy leader. Jezebel was the one in control. So of what use? God invests in the leader. God protects the leader. God gives grace to the leader. God gives the leader wisdom. Because God expects the leader to lead the people for the purpose of God. God needs leadership. Without leaders, the purpose of God cannot be done. Angels are not going to do things. God needs leaders. And so this is a terrible spirit because this spirit attacks the very purpose of God. If God wants to do a work in this Nigeria now, he would look for a good leader with his spirit and he will begin to direct that leader and that leader will begin to do what is right. God wants to do something in, in, in this place, in this location, affecting women, affecting lives. That's how God gave, that was why God gave the vision of Daughters of Destiny. We are not just here just to come and dance and go. We are here to affect destinies. And that's how come God calls a leader. So anything that affects a leader negatively is a terrible spirit that wants to truncate the purpose of God. I want you to note it very, very well. So, people with Jezebelic spirits, how do you discern them? Because you see, in the whole of the equation, Naboth never came face to face with Jezebel. Did you see when Naboth came face to face with Jezebel? But was he not killed? The spirit of Jezebel operates underground. They are never, you, you won't see them, but they will be engineering people. She sent letters to people to, to raise up accusation. We're going to see it. But she never showed her face. When you begin to see things happening around you, you don't understand. You are the HOD. All of a sudden, people are not coming again. You don't even know why they are not coming again. You don't understand what is happening. People that were given before, when you are talking, they'll be looking the other way. Somebody has poisoned them. And the one who has poisoned them will be, he will, he will, will be pretending. So it takes God to uncover your eyes. In 14 years of ministry, I've dealt with this spirit at different times. And there was no single time that God didn't judge them. If you leave them, they are cancer. And cancer is difficult to treat when it has spread. <laughs> when cancer spread, you see, the, the greatest way to catch cancer is to cut it off. When a breast is cancerous, you do what? They have to cut it off. If you pity witchcraft spirit, remember the scripture, he said, I gave them time to repent. But they did not. They don't repent. The arrowhead of Jezebel, they never repent. So, you need to be careful. May you not have a Jezebel as your house help? With an evil agenda. Come in. She may be the one that will be the most dedicated. But God will open our eyes today. So, let's begin to see it in that verse 7. That verse 7 again, look at it. She went to her husband and said, Are you not the one governing the whole of Israel? Eat bread, let your heart be merry. I will give you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. 
I will get you the vineyard. Cheer up. Number one. Jezebelic spirit. The way she was talking to Ahab, you would think she really loves him. No, she doesn't love him. She was showing what is called evil care. Jezebelic people will show evil care. They will show their caring, but the objective of the care is not a good one. I will give you the vineyard. What is her position as a first lady? Is there a constitutional provision for her to take over people's vineyard? When even the king did not. They operate in, in the place of authority where they, they are not entitled to. They form a quasi-government. They form a, a, a quasi-group. They form an informal group that is always against the main group. Anywhere you are, watch out. When you see an informal group that is always against the main group, it will start subtly. Be careful. Because the people, <laughs> you are going to see, even people poisoned by Jezebel, if they don't change, they will fall with Jezebel. And the purpose of God will go on. It will not be stopped. It's a terrible spirit. It wastes people. So, they show evil care that is not based on genuine love and integrity of character. So, at a point in this ministry, there was somebody operating like that. She's no longer here. And I remember clearly, she told me, Apostle, you always, this work, when you just finish preaching, just go. Just go and relax, you know. I thought, don't worry. And you know, typically, when we finish, people want to see me, ma, pray for me, ma. You know, that's why they came. He said, don't worry. I will be helping you. And foolishly, I agreed. Before I knew it, the people ordained her a pastor before we ordained pastors. Do you understand? You know ministry. You know the man of God said is in seven stages. There was a stage, it was when this ministry was like eight years or nine years before we got to the stage where I knew that these people have been with me. Let me ordain them, right? She was ordained a pastor by people. They started calling her pastor. I'm telling you the truth. Their children are doing wedding. I, didn't, I wouldn't even know. They'll tell me, pastor, so, so, so. I say, which pastor? Jezebelic spirit. She began to steal the hearts of the people. And she will come to me. And then when the Lord opened my eyes, I was in, the, in London. I left my house help with one of the ladies. I just got the house help. Maybe like a week. And I needed to go and minister in London. And I said, there's no way I can carry this. I can leave this girl. You, my daughter. You know, we're all, it's like I said, Pastor Tony, help me keep my house help. You understand? Let me keep my house help with you. Let me go and minister in London. Because I have to give you live examples so that you will understand. So I kept my house girl with this other sister in the fellowship. Whom, you know, we're all sisters. I was in London where my, the new house help, whom I don't even really know, spoiled something in the house of that sister. And that sister was not comfortable. You know, some of us, we are not matured in the way we treat people. Immediately, that sister just said, hey, you house, uh, apostle house help. You broke my door, you know, something like that. Please find your way, go back to your agent. Are you with me? That was wrong. You understand? Because I kept the house help with her. She should have waited for me to come back. Or she should have taken care of the girl. Or be patient. But she was not patient. We are all learning. So she did that erroneously. And when she did that, I was in London when they now told me, Apostle, your house help. They've sent her away. I said, where? Did she find her way back to the agent? What if she got lost? Ah, you, uh -uh. Why did you send the house help away? Why, why didn't you wait for me? So I was upset with her. Even though I'm a woman of God, that was quite upsetting, right? Yeah, it was quite upsetting. I felt I, be, I, be, I expect better from you. You are like my sister in ministry. Even though you are in the ministry, you are like my sister. So when I got back from that trip, in fact, the thing almost bothered me, I couldn't preach. When I got back to Nigeria, I was upset with her. Even the Bible says be angry. Because if the girl had gotten lost, who, whose house help? Who will police come and meet? So I felt, I felt, no, no, no. I mean, that's not in the spirit of sisterhood. So when I came back, so we were all in London. This particular sister was with us in London. So she knew I was upset. So when we got back, this other person already, her eyes had opened her. Hey, why did I send this girl away? I made a mistake. 
So I was in my office. And I said she has to come and see me. Thankfully, we saw the girl. And the girl went back. And so the, the lady was sitting in the reception. God will open your eyes. Because she was with me all the way. She knew I was upset. We were together in the UK. She knew the matter pained me. And she wanted to exploit it. So, the lady sat in the reception. In that container that is a bookstore now. It used to be my counseling room. So this sister who had aired, she was already, ah, God, he, why did I, let me come and beg apostle. She sat down. I was in my office. That place had a partition. Then this sister, she told my secretary, let me say apostle. As she came in, I said, eh, so she said, sister, so, 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 she's outside. I said, yeah, I know. Let me show you a scripture. Matthew Whoever does not gather with me, scatter it. I'm telling you, somebody we're together. If you give me a scripture, it's to encourage me. As soon as she said that, and she put her hand on the door, Holy Spirit just opened my eyes. Holy Spirit said, your house girl is a personal matter, not ministry matter. He told me to send her away. What she did? Whoever does, with scripture, Jezebel, whoever does not gather, as if maybe you are thinking of forgiving her, po, po, fire, petrol, Psh. so as soon as she opened the door, Holy Spirit opened my eyes, your house hell, is between you and her, it's not a ministry matter, so you cannot deal with somebody on a ministry matter because of your personal issues, I said God, as soon as she closed the door, my ears opened, she now went to the sister. Sister, she... after finishing her, every Jezebel in your life, every Jezebel in your marriage, every Jezebel in your ministry that you don't know, God will expose them by fire in the name of Jesus. Look at that. So this sister, she loved her when she went out. But she had pumped me enough. And you know, I'm a choleric. Me, I'm fire. Not that I don't, my own, I will show my own. Not that I, will keep, I don't keep people with my heart. If I'm upset with you, I'll let you know. If you're upset with me, let me know. That's my system. I, I, my valve is like that. So she wanted me to overdo it. So this sister, as soon as she opened the door, I entered, she just nailed her razor to her. Apostle, forgive me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I should not have sent your house help away. I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Blah, blah, blah. I said, the boy pains me. Oh. She was so disappointed. She was looking for power vacuum. So that when that one is out, she will step in. Anybody who is occupying any power vacuum in your family, in your life, so that they will use it to hurt you. Remember, you are the target. It is the head that is the target. Evil care. So, we had just cleared this place and then she will sit down. The person that told me, Apostle, you know, don't be stressed. Just go back to the blissful. She will now sit down and start counseling people. Oh, yes. In this same ministry. 14 years is a long time now. Our eyes have seen. Our ears have heard. So please, you cannot leave cancer. You will cry and God will cut it off. You will release the fire and they will not be able to stand the fire. In the name of Jesus. And when her judgment began to come on this same ground, it was this same apostle said that came to, he came to deliver one powerful message about witchcraft. Every witchcraft agent here, it was hot. She was the only one the guest minister was still there. She just came. Yeah, my husband is calling me. I said, what? wait now. Let's, uh, huh? No, she just drove out furiously. Drove out. She could not stand again. Your prayer altar must be hot. When it is hot, they will not be able to stay. But if it is not hot, they will overwhelm you. Not only will they overwhelm you, they are going to be cloud your judgment. 
So if anybody wants to do anything, let the person do it by their own hand. But she wanted me to remove that sister. God will open your eyes. Evil care. Be careful of people that give you evil care. They don't ask of people in this fellowship, oh, don't worry, I'll be, I'll be calling you, eh? I'll be calling you, eh? So that you will think they love you and this person doesn't love you. A sincere leader will say, you know there's a lot of work. Even if Pastor Vivian has not come to visit you, can't you see the Lord? Don't worry, even me, when I visit you, it is Pastor that is already visiting you. That's a good person. Not somebody, somebody's complaining, ah, they, they ask of me, mm, eh, you know me, I've been here. Don't worry, I'll call you. Verse number 8, can you read it? Verse 8, 1 Kings 21. Mm -hmm. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed them with his seal and sent the letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in his city dwelling with Naboth. She wrote letters in Ahab's name. Jezebelic spirit usurp authority that is not their own. People are saying, mama, mama, mama. That mama, mama, they are saying for you. is annoying them. They want it. And you see, honor is earned. Somebody, you are sowing into somebody's life, so you earn the person's respect. They have not sown anything, but they want that honor. If you do good, people will respect you. If you are relevant in people's life, they will honor you. So when they see that happening, they, so they want to form their quasi government, let people also be, have allegiance to me. After all, what does the leader have? We are almost about the same age, Seth. I can even speak better in English than her. They begin to judge that leader. It can be in any way. Sometimes some people you even employ. <laughs> you employ them. They came to earn money. After a while, they begin to drag that authority position with you. Because you are not married to the same husband. <laughs> when you look at all grounds, how did this person even come into my life? It is a spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel was so determined to spread her evil influence of bow worship in Israel. She was so determined. She made them create altars of Baal. They are always determined and they are consistent in their work. That is why you, you may pray today, you may leave them tomorrow, you may forgive them. You see, no matter how much you forgive anybody, if the person is not repentant, God will deal with that person. It is no longer a matter of you forgiving some people. I can forgive and forgive, but if the person does not change their ways, God will remove them. The owner of the vineyard will come and check the vineyard one day. It's the owner of the vineyard. So the fact that you are forgiving some people does not mean they want to change. And you will see, episode upon episode, the behavior is consistent. Issue upon issue, the behavior is consistent. Rebellion, subtle rebellion. You will tell people, everybody, let's face this way. When everybody is facing this way, they turn this way. As if why is she commanding us? Oh, prophetic celebration. Everybody tie gele. They are the only ones that will not come with gele. They heard them. They heard. And they are in it. And you know, they're in a position whereby they begin to show other people. Other people will be looking at them. If this person is behaving like this, because he says that woman, you allow her to teach. They always get to leadership position. When they first come in, they pretend. They work very well. So they will get to a position of influence. So they begin to confuse people. And that's why you as a leader, you cannot say, hey, I'm leaving them. I'm leaving. You have to pray at least. The Lord will help us. They usurp authority, which they do not have. They exert false authority over people to sway them to act according to their instructions. So you see some people following them like Mumu. They have stolen their hearts. Confusing them. So those people who are following them, you look at them and you wonder, why is this person behaving like this? You, there's really no issue between the leader and this person. Do you understand? It is somebody controlling that person. Pulling a remote control. Jezebel used the letter-headed paper of the king. That's what it means. If you see somebody's letter-headed paper. So she confused those nobles. When those ones saw the letter, who did they think wrote the letter? They thought it was the king. Many have been misled to their doom by Jezebelic spirit. They can use, <laughs> you see, Jezebel used the seal of the king. She did not only use the letter-headed paper. She used the stamp. 
You know the seal that CNC gives you. So sometimes some people can steal letter headed paper. But when you now see the seal, they don't all operate ordinarily. They operate with a false authority just to convince people. What do they use these days? They can use evil care like money. Always watch, especially in church. I know them. You have a major goal that will benefit everybody. That nobody's name will be mentioned. They will not give. Then they will identify somebody. Is this person I want to give money? I'm not saying God cannot lead you like that. But I always watch them. You tell them, the ministry needs this thing. We need this thing. You see people with genuine hearts. You say, ah, apostle, this is all I have. 5,000. You want to buy a generator. They will never contribute. But they will contribute to something that will be attached to their name. They will contribute to somebody so that they can buy the person. And I want you to give this person this car. I didn't buy the car. As a woman of God with open heart, I have to call the person who bought the car and the person that the car is supposed to be given to. Right? What has happened between them? Forever and ever, the person that collected the car. Are you seeing? Are you learning? Jezebel. If God has given you a car to bless the ministry, bless the ministry. The ministry will use it in whoever. So, I'm not saying you cannot bless people, but some people, that's their consistent habit. They will never give to the general need. Is it not, some, is it not a general need that has brought all of us here? They will specify, is this person I want to give? In fact, <laughs> you know, some of them, some people don't know they're operating under that spirit. By the time you want people, even the Bible says your left hand should not know what your right hand is giving. By the time you start specifying, we have various needs. If you want to give, give to the ministry. If you want to give, give to advance the work. If you want to help somebody, it's different. God can help you to help somebody. Give the person and help the person, fine. But by the time you now bring it, I'm giving no, but I want it to be directed here. If you want to buy a car for somebody, buy the car for the person, Abby. Yeah, privately. There's nothing wrong with that. But when there's a general need, they will never, even if they have it, say, who will know that I gave? A terrible spirit. A terrible spirit. Evil care. It can be money. It can be attention to buy the heart. Jezebel used the letter-headed paper and seal. Now, they use all sorts of things. Attention to buy the heart of people whom they do not have the natural authority or influence over. So you'll be wondering, why are they doing this thing to them when they have bought their hearts? They even buy allegiance. So you are in a ministry like this, you have a problem. You will not take the problem to the pastor. They will block it. Why are you going to her? Come, we can pray. Jezebel. I've seen people here with serious problems. They are begging them. Go and meet apostle now. Why? Is she God? And you are in the ministry. Why? Somebody has told her you don't need to. We can solve the problem. I'm telling you life things though. I'm not sharing fable with you. Somebody has told her, what? Is it money you need? We we'll solve it. It is not like standing in the gap that, oh, there is a lot of work. It's not that you are the authority. There, we have authority levels here. I can even refer people to the pastor in charge. Okay? They are not the pastor in charge. But they stand to block people. Jezebel. Everywhere is quiet now. I tell somebody, I'm always here after 100 days. Anybody that wants to see me can see me, even if you're a first-timer. But, Jezebel will block people. Don't tell her your problem. I've seen these things, though. Ah, sister, so, 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 this issue, come now, let's pray about it. Somebody has blocked her. Somebody has told her, you don't need to go to her. It's in money, we'll give you money. Go and solve the problem. They don't know that money can fail. They don't know that something, anointing is like a conduit. Always honor the people that God has put over you. It's for a reason. It's for a reason. There are so many times in my life, the people that God has put over me, ah, they always help me during crossroads and I honor them. The, the one that poured oil on my head. When I was nobody, the one that God spoke to concerning me. And he has not done anything wrong. Anybody that, the person has not done anything wrong to you, but they are poisoning your heart. You have to ask yourself, what did this person even do to me? 
The person has not done anything wrong to you. It's just the story you have heard from somebody else. And that somebody else, check that person. Envy. You know, now we said King was envying Nebo's vineyard. Notice, it was not Jezebel that spoke to Naboth. She engineered and orchestrated it. They always do underground work. They have where they do meeting. They have where they get people and talk to them. They have a quasi group. If you don't belong to a department here, I don't know which other group you now belong to. Friends of Daughters of Destiny, who set you up? Or old girls of Daughters of Destiny. We, we are still young. You are old girls of Daughters of Destiny. We used to all attend Daughters of Destiny. Well, who is chasing you? A former so-so. Please, let's be careful. Because this is why some people stay in a place they are never blessed. Number one. Number two. This is why some people fall into error. I see people falling into error. People with Jezebelic spirit, they operate with under, they operate underground, but they are hardly confrontational. But they instigate people. Can you read verse 11? Read, read verse 11. First Kings 21, 11. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles, who were the inhabitants of, in his city, did as Jezebel had sent unto them. And as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them, they proclaimed a fast and set Neboth on high among the people. They did as Jezebel has instructed. I have seen people carrying out the instruction of Jezebelic people. Immediately they are telling me, I know they are telling a lie. It is not your voice I'm hearing. It's the voice of the person who advised you. And come and say, God will now expose them. That thing they used to lie to me. Apostle, I'm traveling abroad. You now begin to see them in the quarter. Ah. Shabi, you said you have gone to India abroad. Eh. No, actually. Eh. Ah. The enemy just wants to distract that person from where the person will be blessed. That's what the enemy wants to do. So, the elders and the nobles, they did. Anybody under the false control of Jezebel today, I break the chain. Their voice will no longer ring in your ears. By the anointing of God in this altar, I dissociate you. I scatter you in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, you will not obey their instruction. Some people have become toys in the hand of Jezebel. They want you to behave anyhow. They use you as toy. And watch this. They are putting you in the line of fire. They are putting you in the line of fire. Anywhere you are. In your church. Don't rebel against your pastor. The man has not done anything. He's doing, is somebody just telling you. He say, I've heard. Ah, you, you just came. Let's tell you the story of this church. You, you just came. JJC. They want to infect you. God brought you to that church for a purpose. And watch this. The Lord told me this. The agenda of Jezebel is to remove people from their purpose. Now, how do you know where God has sent you? You will just find out your heart is there. You may not even understand why you are there. You just know that when you are there, your spirit, because you are a spirit. So when you are there, your spirit is at ease. You want to go back there. Why? God is sending you there. Your assignment may not show up until four years. There are many people that God has sent to this ministry for a particular purpose. I may not know it. Some God has shown me. So, Jezebel wants to dislodge them. Jezebel targets people. When they're in a ministry, they target key people. And they begin to poison them. Over the years, they take their time. So, when it is the time for those people to do what they want to do. Today, I pray for you. The people you have lost. Now you are wondering, oh, this person is no longer here. You have lost those people because you didn't understand. Let there be divine connection in Jesus' name. Let there be divine restoration in Jesus' name. So you need to be sensitive. God must open your eyes to see what, he did, what Jezebel wants to do in your life. He may even want to remove you from where God would have blessed you. So, I hope our eyes are opening. 
The people, what did they do? They set up. They set up Nebut on a high seat, right? And they judged him. And after judging him, they took him out to be stoned. I actually looked at it. You know, it's easy to say that Nebut did not pray. We don't know the time frame. But when I looked at it and I meditated on it, it seemed the thing happened quickly. Before he realized what was wrong, he just thought he refused the king. The next thing they called him to a meeting, not knowing that they had planned for him for that meeting. Raise up your hand. Say, I will not walk into any trap. I didn't mean he shouldn't have gone for that meeting. He should have escaped. Say, my children will not walk into any trap. Anywhere they have planned for me. Pray, pray, pray. Makasata. He never knew they had planned for him. My husband will never walk into the trap. The name of Jesus. How did they call him? They called him to come and they set him up on a high seat. He probably thought they were going to honor him. Meanwhile, they wanted to kill him. Lift up your voice in 2020. Anywhere they are planned in the night, oh God, reveal in the name of Jesus. I will never walk into the trap of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, I will never walk into the trap of the enemy. When it remains the last minute, any invitation that is disguised, but they want to use to trap me or trap my spouse, trap my walk. Oh God, you are the mighty deliverer. Deliver me. In the name of Jesus. Marika Sandaka Yagata. Rocky Satala Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Some things happen so quickly. Why didn't he dream? Why didn't he see? Sometimes we don't see, sometimes we don't dream. But God will answer for us in Jesus' name. So the nobles. They obeyed the instruction of Naboth and they had innocent blood on their hands. Every time you obey, you obey Jezebel, the one controlling you, telling you, do like this when you get their kidney. When she says this, don't answer. What? They are putting blood on your hands. Lift up your right hand. Say, every instruction I have obeyed, that I am obeying from any Jezebelic voice, let it be terminated right now. Lord, oh, every instruction. In any way, I've been deceived. In any way, I'm acting under deception. Today, I ask for the mercy of God. In the name of Jesus, any cause I have brought upon myself because Jezebel is deceiving me. Some of you, it is a voice telling you, you go for a meeting, you go and report. Everything they have said that you go and report. You think God is blind at that time. Or he cannot see. May God have mercy. Jesus name. So when people are under the attack of Jezebelic person their reasoning is suspended. May your reasoning not be suspended. Because you see you are, you, are, you are a spirit being if you reason well. How do you know you are coming out of that witchcraft spell? It's a spell. It could have been the spell could have come because of money. The spell could have come because of what the person did for you. So you are not reasoning very well. You are subjective in your thoughts but when you are coming out you will now begin to question what that person is saying eh, you said uh, she's the pastor vivian did this eh. when she did this what did you two do so that means <laughs> you are coming out of the spell please question people that are telling you to do something that you don't know the cause because you are responsible for your own life the Lord will help us. Be careful of any other group of opinion contrary to the authorized leadership anywhere you find yourself. If you don't understand, ask questions. If you cannot ask, keep quiet. You can always ask questions. Nothing says you shouldn't ask questions in a, in a, in a nice way. Ah, please, I don't understand. This shofar, you people are always blowing here. It's true. I will explain to you. It is blown by apostolic and prophetic people. And I will show you the scriptures. In the book of Ezekiel, you sound the alarm. It's a sign of authority. It's in the Bible. It's scriptural. But some ministry, they don't do it. They don't understand. So when you get to a place, please. Somebody had asked me this before. How come you people are always pouring oil? We are raising altars. So that we are decreeing and declaring. Then you show Bible verse to support it. So the person will be clear. So don't just keep quiet and allow people to say, mm. wait fellowship. 
The person will not exploit your ignorance. Jezebel always exploits the ignorance of people. Meanwhile, there's nothing stopping you from asking questions in a right way because you want to know. You, God has brought you here. Like I tell people, this ministry is not a cult. You are free to come and go. It's not a place where you enter, you cannot live again. No, that's a cult. You would, if you don't understand, you ask. And if you, you are a Berean Christian, go and open your Bible. If you are led by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will confirm to you that, ah, I'm in the right place. You will have a testimony in Jesus' name. You may not be the Jezebel, but if you walk with Jezebel, if you align with Jezebel, you are also guilty. Because Jezebel will not come out to do the work by herself. She will send people. He will send people. Jezebel had great power. She not only had Ahab under her skirt, but 850 Baal prophets. So, don't be deceived. The person has influence. We're not talking about somebody that doesn't have influence. The person has influence. But it is for you to know that your identity cannot be corrupted. And your identity will not be corrupted. In the name of Jesus People with Jezebelic spirit always have some form of power source. They have some form of power source. Something will attract you to them. Either money, either influence, and they confront authority and leadership. Remember what I told you, I'm going to share about why is it that God needs leaders? Why has God chosen you to be a leader? You will understand. If, there is no, if God doesn't invest in leadership, the devil will take over the whole world. God needs somebody to be speaking the word of God so that the, the work of the devil will be scattered. If all of us were afraid, nobody wants to step into leadership. The devil will be having a field day. People will be believing the, the agenda of the devil. And I was sharing, even in marriage, we have to model good marriages. Even if your marriage is not perfect, you have to model a good marriage and speak well. Why? We have to speak the right, speak the right words, speak the truth. We have to bring the truth to the men. That's why we are doing breakfast with my king. And I was telling the guest speaker, Sir, when you come to that breakfast with my king, tell the men what they are supposed to know that nobody is telling them. Do you know what is happening now? Because people have seen that people who suffer in marriages, they are shortchanged. So the younger generation, they say, Mommy, you that you suffered and suffered, see what happened to you. Please, Mommy, I beg. Don't believe it. Because nobody has been talking to the men. We've preached submission, submission, submission is tired of being submitted. It is true. How can you continue to preach submission and nobody is telling the man to love his wife? Nobody is telling the man to put next of king his wife. You will not put next of king your wife. What's going to happen in case of in case city, like we say in Nigeria? You think your brother will love, will love your wife and your children? When everybody is looking for money. So, these are the things. We have to arise and begin to tell men. A lot of men are not mentored and they are in position. So, all they keep saying, she's not submitting to me. She's not submitting. That's not the only thing in marriage. So, I say, sir, come and tell the men what they need to hear. Man to man. They have to know. You, you, are, not, you are not taking care of your wife. Yet, you want her. Lie down. It's my turn. I want to whistle. Get up. Get me food. Do this. That is a slave. It is a slave that you demand things from and you don't owe anything. You don't even owe a slave salary. Do you owe a slave? If you have a slave, a slave has been bought. That is the impression some men have of women, that she's a slave. No woman is a slave. You don't even care how the woman feels. People have to talk to men, mentor men, so that they will be... Your wife is not just somebody you just rob on part of the furniture. You have to care about how she feels. Then she will give you her best. But how many men hear this? So if a woman is saying it, they will say, this woman wants to spoil my wife. But, <laughs> but women are crying. So we have to tell the men to tell the men what they need to hear. So that they can be better men. Otherwise, the marriage institution is breaking down. Right before our eyes, people have become lesbians. They are becoming lesbians. The boys, they, they say they don't want to marry again. Girls are saying they raped them. And so there are, a lot of things is happening. Everything you see happening in American and Western world, just give it 20 years. You begin to see it. Even before then. How come divorce is, the rate of divorce is so rampant? 26 years in marriage. Many, I mean, do you know what eyes have seen? 
But thank God. So we have to keep on asking God for grace and model it and tell people it can be done. It may be difficult. Grace will carry you. Aha. It may not be perfect, but one day it will come round. Keep doing the right thing. Invest. When you invest, the grace of God will be released upon it. If nobody is modeling good, good marriages, nobody wants, nobody, is, nobody cares. People will say, follow your career. The Lord will help us. We have a lot of feminists who are now regretting abroad. They are feminists, but now they've preached feminism. But look at them now at their age. Things have gone bad. They are regretting. But none of us will regret in Jesus' name. So, in closing, Jezebelic spirits use their strong convictions to get their own way. God always mm. judge and remove Jezebel. Can you read verse number 23? I want everybody to pay attention. What I've just taught you now, please take it. If you find yourself in such a company, this is the word of the Lord. It's not my word. Can you read it? First Kings 21, 23. And of Jezebel also spake the Lord, saying, The dogs shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. Hallelujah. Revelations 2, 21 to 22. It says, I have given her time to repent of her immorality, but she is unwilling. That person is doing that thing and you are seeing it. It's because God is giving that person time to repent. But you see, Jezebel never repents. She is unwilling. So, can you read 22? It says, I will cast her. Oh, Makali Bragayaba. Read it for me. Behold, I will cast her into a bed. And them that commit adultery with her. Into... Which, which translation is that? This is KJV. He says, I will cast her on a bed of suffering. How many people's Bible has that? He says, I will cast her on a bed of suffering. And I will make those who commit adultery with her to suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. That's the word of God. Somebody is controlling you to do evil. You are following. That's the word of God. He said, all those people who are aligning with that person, who hear this word, whom the Holy Spirit speaks to, it is never too late. Oh, let me just tell you, if Jezebel has deceived you for long, it is never too late. This word, let it bring repentance because judgment is coming. And when judgment comes, that's why some things will happen to some people. There's nothing anybody can do. So, it is important for us that if your heart has been poisoned by anybody, today the Holy Spirit will set you free. If your heart has been poisoned, the Lord will help you. He says, I will strike our children dead. May the works of your hand not be stricken dead. May you not labor and lose it. In the name of Jesus. What do you need to do? Start giving if somebody has poisoned your heart. Not to give. Somebody has said, 100 hmm, days, 100 days. 100 days. I give, it's money. I give 1,000 every day, every day. And somebody was listening. What is that? You are calculating how much you are giving in 100 days. They instigate in a subtle way. It's money every day. I give hundred. You know, ah, that's hundred. You know, I just watch and I just smile. As a leader, a lot of things, God will open your eyes, but you don't have to react. If your heart has been poisoned, you don't give. You used to give before, but somebody has poisoned. Start giving again. If Jezebel has poisoned you, you used to serve before. Now. You are giving excuses. Start serving. Don't go down with Jezebel. Anywhere you are. Can we see verses 9 to 11? Verses 9 to 11. That is how you get out of the clutches of Jezebel. That thing that Jezebel said you shouldn't do. Begin to do it. 
then Jezebel will see that her agenda or his agenda has failed in your life. Because you don't know, Jezebel is also trying to look good. He will tell you don't give, but Jezebel will give. Jezebel will tell you leave, but Jezebel will not leave. After Jezebel has God is he target somebody else. Say every cancerous cell in my, in my life, I release the blood of Jesus to cut you off in Jesus' name. Verse 9 to 11. 1 Kings 21, 9 to 11. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim a fast and set Naboth on high among the people and set two men, sons of Belial, before him to bear witness against him saying, Thou didst blaspheme God and the king and then carry him out and stone him that he may die. And the men of his city, even the elders and the nobles who were the inhabitants in his city did as Jezebel had sent unto them and as it was written in the letters which she had sent unto them. Evil, false accusation, wrong accusations must never be taken lightly. Anytime anybody brings an evil accusation against your life, and I leave them, no. In the place of the spirit, the Bible says every tongue that rises up against us in judgment, you do what? If you don't condemn it, it is this same mouth that they can use to bring you to a good place. It is with the mouth that they use to recommend you. Never ever be careless with wrong accusation because that wrong accusation is not just an accusation. It is something that they have said in order to, have, to achieve a purpose. Today, every wrong accusation against your life, let it be destroyed in Jesus' name. Evil rumors must be dealt with squarely with the word of God and in prayer. Evil tongue that comes against anyone in this ministry, I condemn it in the name of Jesus. Verse 12. They proclaimed the fast and set Naboth on high among the people. They proclaimed what? Fast. Even the devil knows the importance of fasting. Why did they proclaim a fast? So that the accusation can be strong. We children of God will be yawning at 12. Is it only fasting? You just finished 21 days. You are starting 14. Some people can fast evil fast to take somebody's husband. You will now wonder, why is the problem so difficult? They have laced that evil with evil spiritual power. They will fast because they know spiritual principles. The devil knows spiritual principles. People that want to do evil, they know. They, they may not drink water. They may not, they may not eat uh, okra. You will see them saying all sorts of things. So that they can get what they want to get. That is why when you are in any situation, the thing is, is so difficult. You are wondering. They, re, they have laced it up. Today, any evil spiritual arsenal that they have launched, let the blood of Jesus scatter it in the name of Jesus. Evil fast was the instruction given by Jezebel so that the matter will really be effective and swayed in her favor. Today I declare and declare anybody where they have done agreement of prayer before they come and speak to you. Hear me and hear me well. I've seen people do it. They will agree. Let's go and meet apostle. As they were praying, Holy Spirit said, look out of your window. God will open your eyes. God will show you in the dream. In the name of Jesus. In any way, some people want to use spiritual power to take advantage. The altar anybody has raised to confuse me or confuse my husband or confuse my marriage. They did an evil fast and they killed Naboth. Today, let the altar catch fire. Father, expose them. Somebody pray. Anywhere anybody has visited, and me, I'm sleeping, I don't know anything. Oh God of heaven, arise in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. You know, those were just clothes. Those were just shoes. They didn't mean anything. I will not lose anything. People will not manipulate me. Every power of manipulation in my marriage scattered by fire. In the name of Jesus, somebody pray. This thing can happen to anybody. Ah, I will not be spiritually casual. Somebody pray. Lord, I will not be spiritually casual. Anywhere they have network in the back. And I don't know. They are calling my name. Anybody using my name for evil prayer. Let the prayer backfire. Lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. Any prophetic action that anybody is doing against my life. Let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Any evil they are doing against my marriage. Let it backfire in the name of Jesus. Any prophet that they are paid for my life. 
right now the Bible says the diviner will go mad in the name of Jesus anywhere they take my name let them have accident on the way in the name of Jesus somebody pray the enemy will not succeed over my life in the name of Jesus Rasikatala Brega Yegete. Mashakatala Bra. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Rogogo Yaga. In Jesus' mighty name. You are going to pray. Say any evil fast. Any evil prayer. To sponsor evil agenda. In my life. In my family. Let it backfire. In the name of Jesus. That's why people are manipulated. Anyone fasting evil for my husband will backfire in the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Maka saga saga taga labra. Pray, 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 pray. Don't be spiritually casual. A stronghold starts as a foothold. If you don't understand that foothold, it will graduate to a stronghold. In the name of Jesus. Pray, 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 pray. Saka tala braga yagata. Let the Lord reveal every evil plan. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Everything Jezebel said was a lie. It's a lies. Any lie that anybody has told that is working against my marriage. Do you know some women they will say they have boyfriend and they don't have any boyfriend? And their husband will believe it. You are going to sleep around. You are going to sleep around and it's as if the thing has entered. You are trying to convince the person, lift up your voice. Any evil lie that has been that has been shot into my life or my marriage or the life of my children. Pray for your children. Anywhere a lie is causing me harm. Oh, I arise right now in the name of Jesus in the spirit. I tear that lie down. Holy Ghost, tear that lie down. The name of Jesus. Anyone spreading evil lies about this ministry? In the name of Jesus, let the light be turned down in Jesus' name. Anywhere they are spreading rumors, I tear it down in the name of Jesus. Rasha Katala Braga Yagata. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We are going to take that prayer in another way. I'm preaching and praying from experience. The first logo of Daughters of Destiny many years ago was DD, you know, because it's for women, we put a woman's head there. I had this neighbor, I just noticed she used to snub me, snub me, snub me. She just used to snub me all the time. And our children are friends. So one day, I, I was able to engage her. I, I'll come to DOD now. Say, eh, hey, what's that head you have on top of that? That head on top of in a mini. And she was like, I said, which head? So I told her, please remove the head from the logo. So that you will not be misunderstood. Do you know that's how some people, they just conclude about you. And you don't know why they have concluded about you. You are going to lift up your voice. I will not die because of the lust of the enemy. I will not die because of the suspicion of the enemy. Those people killed Nebot because of a lie. Because somebody was lost in. In the name of Jesus. Our inheritance will not be forcefully taken away. In the name of Jesus. Our inheritance will not be forcefully taken away. Our children will not be forcefully taken away. Our marriages will not be forcefully taken away. Our lives will not be cut short by greedy rulers. Our lives will not be cut short by greedy people in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. The last prayer and the most painful one. 1 Kings 21 verse 17. 1 Kings 21 verse 17. Can you read it? Verse 17. And the word of the Lord came to Elijah the Tishbite saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Neboth. Whither he has gone down to possess it. The heaven of Nebuchadnezzar opened for divine intervention. But he was already dead. He's not the only one. Uriah's heaven opened after he had been killed. Meaning all the while. 
God knew about it. How come? It was after he died that judgment came. Lift up your voice. Father, don't be silent over my matter. Ah! It doesn't make God less God. He has mercy. He shows mercy on whom he shows mercy. Don't be silent over my matter. Oh, God. Ah! You will not arise after the fact. In the name of Jesus. Masaka, don't be silent. Oh, God. Maragazagada. My heaven of intervention will not open after the fact. Let my heaven open at the right time that it will benefit me in the name of Jesus. Oh God, do not be silent over my matter. Meaning God was waiting, waiting, waiting. You said call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you. I will not sleep when I'm supposed to cry out in the name of Jesus. Oh, Maliga Zagadaga Yagada. Let my heaven of intervention not come too late. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Masanda Gayagata. Ruba Gayegete. Oh, Malika Sata. Have mercy, oh God. Don't be silent over this ministry in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, show up, show up, show up. Show up in good time, oh God. Satisfy me early with your mercy, oh God. Satisfy this ministry early with your mercy. In the name of Jesus, oh God, don't be silent over my matter. When evil people rise up against me, oh God, don't be silent in the name of Jesus. When evil people rise up against my husband and my children, don't be silent, oh God. When evil people rise up against daughters of destiny, don't be silent, oh God. Arise, oh God. In the name of Jesus, don't be silent, oh God. You are a merciful God. My intervention, let it come at the right time. At the right time. When it will benefit me, oh God. Yeah, it does not make you less of God. I know that. But Lord, in your mercy, oh God. Shakatali Braga Yagata. Masikatali Brogo Yagata. Thank you, Father. Rebogo Zatali Braga Shankata. Oh, have mercy. Have mercy, oh God. When the blessing comes, it won't meet us in sickness. In the name of Jesus. By the time the open door will come, our leg will not be amputated. In the name of Jesus. By the time the rain comes, we wouldn't have lost our bucket. Oh, Masatali, bro. Ah, lift up your voice. Said the blessing of God will not be a waste in my life. Oh, the intervention of God will not be a waste over my matter. In the name of Jesus, oh God, it will arrive on time. Lord, don't be silent, oh God. Look upon me with your eyes of mercy. This assignment you have given me, help me. My life will not be cut short. I will not build for another to inhabit, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord, have mercy upon me, have mercy. Somebody pray with long life, satisfy me, my family, in the name of Jesus. I will not be lost before the glory of my children will appear. Ah, in the name of Jesus, Malika Satayaba. I will not be lost before the glory of my children will appear as I'm laboring. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, I will eat the fruit of my labor in my lifetime in good health. In the name of Jesus, somebody pray. Marika Rachel died before the glory of her son came. Oh, somebody pray. Marika Sanda Gali Brogo Yakata. Marike Sende Geyebo. As I'm laboring in the place of prayer, when the glory appears, I will not be lost. I will not be missing in the name of Jesus. In your mercy. In your mercy. Oh Lord, have mercy upon me in any way I'm failing. Lord, let your mercy speak. Oh God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, divine intervention will not come when it is too late. God intervened, but Nebot was already dead. That will not be our portion. Father, we bless your name. We will not be casual about the things of God. Thank you, Father, for what we have learned today. 
our prayer altar will not go silent. It will not grow cold in the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father and our God, in Jesus' name. Give him